Hello, my friends. Today, I'm going to show you exactly how I create these. All right, let's get started. So doing live MIDI art is an idea I actually got when I first saw the work of Savant and Andrew Huang and uh, other people on YouTube who have done incredible MIDI art that not, not only looked cool, but also sounded good. And when I saw that, it blew me away. And if you know me, you know I'm always trying to <laughs> challenge myself with live stuff that people maybe wouldn't normally think of doing live. So. I wrote that idea down in my long list of video ideas, but then honestly, I completely forgot about it. And then, just like half a year ago, when Jacob Collier started doing his uh, live MIDI art videos where he wrote Happy 2021 and uh, some other stuff as well, that really inspired me and reminded me that it's something I want to uh, try. So. Thank you, Savant, Andrew Wong. Thank you, Jacob Collier, for the inspiration. Honestly, I was just going to make a couple of these uh, video game-themed live MIDI art videos, but they blew up on TikTok and Instagram and got so much positive feedback that I just kept making them. And so far, I've made like nine or ten of them, and I'm having a great time. So thank you to all of you who have watched and left such nice comments as well. I really appreciate it. And hopefully today, I can answer a lot of the questions that I get and break down the process of creating these. So for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to try to create something that's relatively simple, because normally these videos take me uh, two to four days of work, you know, from the composition process till I can actually play it live, and uh, then I, sometimes I add a little backing track, mix it, you know, so um, it's a long process. But I was thinking of trying the Apple logo today. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not like some huge Apple fan. I do use a MacBook, but I thought it would just be an easily recognizable logo that's probably not too difficult to create with MIDI. Um, and also, I got a bunch of requests for it, believe it or not. So uh, let's, let's try this. Now, I am going to start this from scratch. I've not attempted this at all. And I'm going to explain my process as I go along. All right, let's start. So I've got the logo open right here. And then this is the piano roll of the DAW that I use, which is Cubase. Um, I just upgraded to Cubase 11, by the way, which has a much improved piano roll too. What I do, first of all, is pick a certain range that I want to work with. Because if you want to play this live, then you need to be able to reach all the notes with your fingers. Now, depending on how big your hands are, um, you probably want to choose an appropriate range of notes. I usually go with uh, either two to two and a half octaves, because if I want to play a chord and create a vertical line, and I'll show you that very soon, I need to be able to play evenly spaced notes within that range. And if the range is too big, there's no way I can do that. Also, sometimes I need to hold certain notes to create a horizontal line and play other stuff while I'm holding that note. So for the same reason, if the range is too big, that just becomes impossible. Let's go over some basics first of all. To create a vertical line, for example, all you have to do is play a chord, and you want to get as many notes that are evenly spaced inside there. For example, for a horizontal line, you can just hold a note or play a repeated note. Simple enough. Things get a little trickier when you're trying to create curves and diagonal lines. So for that, you need to play scales. Now, there are many different scales that can work. And for example, um, here is a major scale. As you can see, it creates a diagonal line. Now, if I want to create a curve, what I have to do, I have two options. I can either start with bigger intervals and then uh, make the intervals smaller and smaller as I go up. So for example, I can start with a major scale, but then transition to a chromatic scale as I go along, and then the spaces will grow smaller between the notes and we'll get a curved uh, visual. Let's try that. All right. Now another way to do this is to change the timing of your notes. So for example, let's start with 16th notes and then gradually uh, decrease or increase the value of the notes, make them longer. Because the notes slow down, we'll get a curve.
for example. As you can see, that's a pretty round line, and that's because I started with 16th notes, then switched to 8th notes, and then played uh, quarter notes. I'm not actually playing on the grid right now. I could, but for now I'm just going to work without the grid. Okay, let's get started. Let's try to create this Apple logo right here. Now, one question I get asked a ton is, do I first draw these and then learn how to play them. So not exactly. What I do is I work on these images one element at a time. Basically, I break them down to different components, different lines, and I try to use my keyboard as much as I can for the entire process because uh, I want to make sure that it's playable, first of all, and also, I just, as a player, I just find it faster to do it this way than just use my mouse to draw. I will use the mouse sometimes just to tweak things and try different things, move things around a bit, but I try to use the keyboard as much as possible. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to try to create this line right here, this first curve from the middle of the apple that goes all the way up. Let's give that a shot. Let's pick a key first of all. C major is a little boring, so I think I'm going to go with... E flat major. I don't know. It just seems like an Apple kind of key. Don't ask me why. I have no clue. So to create this curve, this initial curve right here, I'm going to start somewhere in the middle of my range. I'm going to start because the, the very beginning is kind of almost vertical. I'm going to play some notes that are really fast. Then I'm going to slow down as I go up all the way up to an E flat, an octave above. Now, I might just add some chromatic notes in there as well. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, we can see that's far too steep. So let's do it a little bit faster. Okay, now let's try Try going from six, uh, from fast notes to to triplets to eighth notes. S gradually slow it down. Mm. That's not too bad, but I feel like it needs to curve a little more on top. So I need to slow it down even more and probably hold the note on top. Okay, now I forgot something. I forgot that I'm going to have to do this thing on top right here, that leaf. So I have to shrink my range a bit. I can't go all the way up to the top of my range. I'm going to try to end this on a B flat instead, just so I have that room to add that part later. Let's just do it like that. It's kind of a low resolution pixel version of it, but I think that'll work. Let's first finish creating the whole thing top part, ignoring that leaf on top for now. Now we have to go back down, but pretty slowly because um, it's a very, very gradual decline. That might work. Maybe a little bit faster. Yeah, let's try that. And go back up immediately. Shorten this note right here. I think that works. And now we have to hold this note a bit, right? And then go back down. But we're going to have to, because there's a bite in the apple, we're going to have to stop it maybe on the A flat. Or maybe a little, maybe we'll stop it on the, on the F. Yeah, I think that would work. All right, moving on. Let's try to create this leaf right here. Now, that's going to be a little more tricky. Uh, first of all, we have to use the remaining part of our upper range. And we stopped on B flat. So we have a few more notes to work with. And we can actually extend this, you know, uh, over two octaves. As long as it's playable at the end, that's totally fine. So I might add a few notes as well. Go all the way up to G. Okay, so first of all, let's try to create the curve this curve right here. Something like that. Let's start a little more in the center. Okay, let's try to create the other, the bottom line now. Well, that looks pretty cool, but probably doesn't sound too great. 
Yeah. I'm actually going to shift this an octave down because it's, a little, it's starting to be a little irritating. <laughs> it's so high up. It's better. That sounds kind of cool, but I don't know if it'll be playable because I'd have to do this all with one hand. <laughs> And I'd have to play the other bottom part as well. So I don't think I can do that, unfortunately. Let's go with a lower resolution approach. Yeah, I think that'll work. It's pretty simple. I think that'll be playable. It might be a little tricky. I'll have to practice it because I'll have to play this bottom G with my thumb and these notes as well. Probably with my thumb and then do this thing on top. Shouldn't be too difficult. It's possible. All right, let's move on. Let's try to create this part of the bottom part of that first curve. So this is where things get a little trickier because when you have basically two lines at the same time or three lines at the same time, you have to make sure that the counterpoint between them actually works, that they sound good together. And this can take a lot of uh, experimentation and trial and error and knowledge of music theory really helps as well. Um, I'm keeping this one relatively simple. I'm going to stick to one scale, I think. Uh, but normally, I will change keys throughout. I'll modulate. I'll use a lot of chromatic passing notes and passing chords just uh, to give me as many tools as possible to work with. So since this is pretty much a vertical line, I'm thinking I'm going to start with so the, the, what we already did started with this E flat. So I think I'm going to start with little chord or just another two notes in E flat major and then go go down from there all the way to here that might actually not be enough I might have to go actually all the way down to this E flat and make it three octaves but since I don't have to do too much with the left hand and only create this outline of the apple uh, on the bottom. It might not be an issue. So I'm going to start with a little chord and then go down pretty fast, then slow down a bit. Now that looks more like a heart. I think the chord needs to be bigger. So I have a bigger vertical line at the beginning. Whoops. Something like that. We're getting there. I think that does look a little better. Yeah, I kind of like that. I think that works. Okay, now we have to create the bite. Now this is going to be tricky because the notes that will create this bite, they're going to have to start right over here where that bottom note hits. And for this bite, I have to basically split it into two lines. One of them goes down, or no, sorry, one of them goes up from the middle to the top. One of them goes down from the middle to the bottom. Let's start with the top one. So I'm going to end on this note right here. All right, so, and this is my range, so I gotta start somewhere, I think, probably around here. Something like that, but uh, that might be a little too big. Yeah, 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 I think that kind of works. Mm, a little too big. That works. And let's try to tweak the notes a bit to make it sound better. Just gonna line these up with the top notes. Yeah, I think that sounds decent. Um, now let's just create this bottom part right here. All right, uh, there we go. Now begins 
the difficult part, where I actually have to practice this and learn how to play it. So I just practice this like I would practice any other piece of music. Uh, the timing is key here. You not only have to play the notes at the right time, but you have to let go of them at the right time as well. So it's tricky. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to practice this. Uh, probably it'll take me anywhere from half an hour to an hour until I can pull it off. And then when I'm ready, I'll get back to you guys. <laughs> All right, I'm back. I've practiced this for something like 30 minutes, and I think I can play it now. I'm going to give it a shot. Um, I did tweak a few little things, change the timing of some of the notes, so it just sounds a little better. I'm not playing this to a click or to a grid. The tempo is kind of rubato and free, um, but I think it works for our purpose right here. So let me try to record this live right now, see how that goes. All right, first attempt. Here we go. That wasn't terrible. I'm going to do it one more time, a little better. What do you think? It's not too bad, is it? I think that kind of works. Let's listen back to it. <laughs> well, it doesn't sound amazing, but I think it looks pretty good. And what we can do now, since we have MIDI, right, we can take this MIDI and route it to whatever kind of sound we want. I'm not editing the MIDI at all. I'm just routing it to different plugins or different synths to try and create something that sounds cool. Okay, let's see what would work for this. Let me try um, just a basic synth plugin to start with, the Retrolog. Let's go for a triangle wave, maybe. Well, now it sounds like a chip tune thing, which I kind of like, actually. Maybe it'll be like an, you know, an 80s Mac uh, ad or something. <laughs> so now the question, do I want to bring it back an octave again? Back up one octave, like we when we started. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure. Let's leave it there for a second. Kind of sounds like some weird death sequence in an old DOS game or something. Game over. Touch a delay. Have a little bit of vibrato or something. Instead of having to pick between which octave we want, let's just have both, right? Get another oscillator in there, an octave above. Okay, so we ended up with something that sounds like chip tune, which I'm down for, you know? It sounds pretty cool. Um, I think I'm going to try to add a little backing track to this. Just one more track to give it some kind of context. Let's see if that works. All right, there you have it. This is the Apple Waltz, retro video game Waltz. Do you think Apple will want to buy this from me? Presenting the iPhone 30. Available now for $20,000. So if you found this tutorial helpful and you feel inspired to try making your own MIDI art, uh, please send it to me. Whether it's live or not, it doesn't really matter to me. I would love to see what you make. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and I'll see you guys next time.